Tar Heels of North Carolina, a matchup of the two winningest teams in the history of college basketball, perhaps a preview of the national championship game upcoming in March. It is all coming up right here on NBC Sports. Sports in association with TBS presents the best of college basketball. Today from Burn Arena, it's the Kentucky Wildcats versus the North Carolina Tar Heels. Today's game brought to you by Ball Clubs. When you look back at college basketball history through the years, well, there's only four true dynasties, I believe, in the last 20 years. The other two are Indiana and UCLA. To be a dynasty, when they call the blue chip high school All American, he must answer the phone. So they have to get at least one All American each year. Number two, they must come from a state where basketball is the sport. Number three is that they must govern their conference. North Carolina has governed the ACC for the last 15 years, and Kentucky's governed the Southeastern Conference the last uh, 15 years. So there has to be tradition, and right here we probably got the game you might see in the finals in the Superdome in March. All right, Al, how do you break it down? North Carolina against Kentucky, obviously a pick em type of thing. Well, for Kentucky to win, they've got to get scoring from the outside. Their guards got to really be Perkins, especially Masters, and they also got to keep Perkins out of, not Perkins, excuse me, Turpin out of foul trouble. For Carolina to win, they've got to control the board. They must control the board. They must get a lead and then go to their delay game. All right, we'll be back for the introduction of the starting lineups in just a moment. Important weekend for many of our teams. On behalf of the Meadowlands, good luck tomorrow to the Giants and the Jets. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, introducing today's starting lineups. First, the Kentucky Wildcats. Number 32, and forward, a 6'6 junior from Bristol, Tennessee, Derek Ford. Number 44 at the other forward, a 6'6 junior from Shelbyville, Kentucky, Charles Hurt. Number 54 at center, a 6'11 sophomore from Lexington, Kentucky, Melvin Turpin. Number 20 at guard, a 6'4 sophomore from Fort Wayne, Indiana, Jim Master. Number 10 at the other guard, a 6'3 junior from Lexington, Kentucky, Dirk Minifield. And the coach of the Wildcats, Joby Hall. Now the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Number 52 at forward, a 6'9 junior from Gastonia, North Carolina, James Worthy. Number 44, the other forward, a 6'8 sophomore from East Meadow, New York, Matt Doherty. Number 41, at center, a 6'9 sophomore from Latham, New York, Sam Perkins. Number 23, at guard, a 6'5 freshman from Wilmington, North Carolina, Mike Jordan. Number 21 at the other guard, a 6'3 senior from the Bronx, New York, Jimmy Black. And the head coach of the Tar Heels, Dean Smith. North Carolina with a record of 5-0, Kentucky at 6-0, a matchup of numbers. One and two will have it in a moment. Kentucky in the dark uniform of blue, and it's controlled by the Wildcats. This is Dirk Minifield. Derek Ford, played by Matt Doherty. And Minifield feeding down low for Hurt. It's quite important to hit your first shot. It gets you out of the gates, gets you off the snide, especially with Charles Hurt. He's kind of a streak ball player. They're settling back into a 2-1-2 zone with the middle man coming high in the zone. 
South Carolina, a very fine passing team. They'll go cross court right throughout. However, they've had their problems recently, Al, in the opening moments. They have not gotten off well in the first half. This is Jimmy Black. Guarding, nice pass, and Ruby has tied it at two. Nice play by Doherty, then he kept the ball alive. An automatic dunk shot by Worthy. Dirk Minifield setting it up. This is Horn. Minifield not able to hit. And North Carolina in the white controlling it. And the Tar Heels have turned it over. Very rare at the top of a game that North Carolina will turn balls over. A little bit nervous, a key game, number one against number two. A lot of pride in this game, two dynasties going against each other. And Joby Hall says he's still trying to figure out why Kentucky can't seem to spring together 40 minutes of solid basketball. He's been unhappy as of late. Horde giving the Wildcats a 4-2 lead. They're going to have to stop, we call them small forwards. They're both six foot six, Horde and Hurt, but they're going to have to stop those forwards. They're settling back to the 2-1-2 zone again. This is Jordan. Doherty. Gotta put it and up. Jordan. Rebounded by Turpin. Jordan was hesitant. If there's a soft spot in North Carolina, it's the outside shooting. The late pass did not work. Mike Jordan, the sensational freshman of the backcourt with the quarterback, Jimmy Black. Worthy. Mickey Crowley says no, foul before the shot attempt. Minnie put his hand in there, caught Worthy on the wrist. He's the new leader, he's the glue, keeps the team together, he's the floor general. He's starting to push him for All-American, even though he's a junior. Settling a 2-3 zone, taking the ball out of bounds. Black has to put the ball up against this zone. The alley -oop for Worthy did not click, Doherty on the recovery. See the hesitant Marvin shooting from the outside. Black's gonna have to get to the top of the key and put the ball up. And this is Jordan. So North Carolina again off to the slow shooting start as Bettyfield moves down. As you miss shots against the zone, the zone gets stronger, if only in your head. Carolina's playing hard man-to-man. -man. They jump switch there in the corner. Trying to get the ball into uh, Turpin, Kentucky. And Kentucky with a 6-2 lead. Derek Ford with a second field goal. Hoare, the junior out of Bristol, Tennessee, who can play both up front and in the backcourt. There's the zone starting to settle back more now because Carolina's missing from the outside. Jimmy Black has to put the ball up. They're trying to force it into the baseline too much. Put it up, Jimmy. <laughs> ah, come on. Got to shoot it from the outside. Put it up. And he's wide open. Foul underneath against North Carolina. Sam Perkins picks up his first. I can't emphasize enough, Bob, how a zone gets stronger as you start missing from the outside. If you, might, if you watch the next time Jordan shoots or Black shoots, they'll turn their arm or pull their arm back. They'll start praying. That ball was put up nice, it caught the side of the rim, just didn't drop. So the Wildcats of Kentucky in possession. Worthy breaking it up, and this is Black starting back for the Tar Heel. Worthy making the move on Hurt. Jordan with the shot. But goes back the other way for Doherty. Yes. Kentucky by two, six to four. Last season, Kentucky finished 22 and six. They were top 10 most of the season, going to the seventh straight postseason. Minifield giving Kentucky an 8 4 lead. However, they were knocked out in the first round by Alabama Birmingham. Decent Carolina staying out of the zone because Masters and Minifield can fill it up from the outside. And Master yet to uh, take that long bomb. Darty bringing the Tar Heels with him too. 8 6 Kentucky. Laying off Darty a little bit. Here's Horde. Rebound, Turpin. 
Very close to hooking that rim that time, getting a technical foul. And Melvin Turpin has done a superb job in filling in for the injured Sam Bowie. Joby Hall had projected a twin tower setup. Here's Jordan. And the foul on the Tar Heels, Matt Doherty. And this is a Carolina-geared crowd because of the large contingent of New York alumni from North Carolina. A timeout call. And East Rutherford, New Jersey. Livingston, Ashwin, Carr, they got a great freshman in uh, Gerard Aubrey. So they got everything to be number one in the country. Kentucky on top by the score of 10-6 and in possession. Master looking for his first shot, but a travel is called. He didn't get the ball down fast enough that time. He dragged his foot. It's awful important for a guard to hit his first shot. Guards are very uh, sensitive type players. If, they, if they're off, they can't. They go all the way off. This is what happened to Jordan at North Carolina now. He's measuring every shot. He needs a basket fan. What about the rims here at the Meadowlands? This arena is used by the New Jersey Nets of the NBA, and perhaps uh, some of the collegians not used to the resiliency. Black Knight able to hit, and Worthy fouled us. He try to follow. These are breakaway rims. What's going to happen throughout the country, you're going to see better shooting percentages team-wise with the breakaway rims because they're soft and the ball bounces around more and they'll get more what we call cries inside the trade. Also, the rebounds do not go out as far as they normally did. So now your secondary rebounders don't go to the foul line for rebound, but in about three more steps. Foul was committed by Charles Hurt. Now this is James Worthy averaging 16 and a half per game. Six foot nine junior out of Gastonia, North Carolina. He was sensational down the stretch last season in the NCAA. Second team all ACC, all this despite playing with a metal rod and three screws in his right ankle, which were removed finally over the summer. I got him on my first team All-American. That's the McGuire projected All-America team for 81-82. And the Tar Heels will take over. Turpin was looking at the basket, trying to get in the hole of the ball first. You first must catch the ball before you go to the basket. But right between his legs, pass from Hurd. We are five and a half minutes in. The battle for number one at the Meadowlands, East Rutherford, New Jersey. Beautiful pass from Turpin. Nice pass, nice alley-oop. If you'll notice now, the Carolina, the Kentucky zone is getting to be a pocket zone. Mike Jordan with that alley-oop pass for tied at 10. And Hurt says, let's start it all over again. Benny Field, the quarterback. Carolina staying in man-to-man. -man. Nice pass, beautiful, well pass by Dirk Minifield. And Derek Horde, his third field goal has six. Here's Benny Field leading a four on three. That time he forced the issue but recovered by Horde. Yeah, he got hung in the air, didn't know what to do, and he kicked the ball back out. Fortunately, Horde was in the right spot. Horde's gonna take him to school right now. Over Dowdy. With second effort, but Worthy off the ball. There's Dowdy. Off the glass. Yes. It's all she wrote. Down the other end, and that was goaltender down the other end. Joe B. Hall jumped, one of the call. We are tied at 12 with seven minutes gone by in this first half. They are all super athletes out there. There are no four players out there. The steal by Jordan. He needs this one. Oh, gutty, gutty, gutty. He kept going in there. And Derek Horde has picked up his first foul, so the freshman, Mike Jordan, who is out, Mention needs that outside shot. He's been struggling here in the first half. Yeah, he needs a basket. Watch, he takes a steal here off the top there. Oh, this is the dunk by, um, earlier by Perkins. And back to the live action. Mike Jordan, freshman, Wilmington, North Carolina, averaging 15 and a half per game. He's now seven for 10. Needs a basket there. When you miss your first shot in the foul line, you should break the foul line, get up and set up again. Don't stand on the foul line. Substitution for Kentucky, Chuck for Gerber. 6-6 six, six senior has come on. Could have broke that foul line. Here's Benny Field. 
and Worthy comes away with it. We're tied at 12. Jim Braddock handling the ball, just came on for the Tar Heels. This what? is Dougherty. That's a walk there, got away with it. Worthy, his second field goal has six, and North Carolina on top by two, 14-12. If they let the ball get inside the paint, Carolina's gonna win. They gotta get that pocket zone even down deeper. Turpin deflected short by Perkins. Good follow. Yes, and it counts. What a block by Sam Perkins. Sam Perkins' arms are 42 inches long. They're unbelievable. And somehow Charles Hurt was able to follow up and put it home. He'll go to the line looking for a three-point play. Jordan committing the foul. And Hurt to the line. He is a junior out of Shelbyville, Kentucky. Tremendous leaper, very strong, and has improved his outside shooting, which was the question mark with Charles Hurt. Chris Brush, Jeff Barlow have come on for the first time for North Carolina. And Kentucky now leads it by the score of 16-14. Eight minutes remaining in this first half here at the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey. And we'll be right back. On the score, Kentucky Wildcats leading North Carolina Tar Heels by the score of 15-14. And we have 12 minutes remaining in this first half. Good game. North Carolina's making multiple substitutions, which Dean normally does. A strong baseline. And there's the man, seven foot one, Sam Bowie. One of the greatest high school basketball players that ever lived. He'll also do it in college and eventually on to the pro. Setting it out, they'll take another look at that leg next week and make a determination. The block by Turpin on Perkins. If you'll notice that time, Kentucky went man to man. Minifield picked up on the switch by Barlow, gets it out for Turpin. Watch, watch Sam Perkins' arms and gets into Turpin. Amazing wingspan. There's two points by Masters. Bingo, yes. bango, bongo. Came off a high pick. Automatic. Jim Master. I'm really surprised they came out of that zone. I wonder what the reason was. I'm trying to figure it out. Maybe they're, uh, I don't know, for some reason they come out man to man. Maybe just to show a different face. Change the rhythm. That's 14 Smith way of coaching. North Carolina trailing by three, 17, 14. Carolina picking down low, trying to punch the ball in around the paint. A lot of ball movement, good man to man defense by Kentucky. And last touch by Brust. So Kentucky will take over. Defense is the size of your heart. You're not born a defensive player, you're born an offensive player. You can teach defense. And any great dynasty or any great team in any sport has super defense. Otherwise, they don't have a great team. And James Worthy has returned for North Carolina. Boy, uh, whoa, good try by uh, Worthy that time. Overplaying hard man to man. There's Master wide open. That's a no-no. You can't leave him open. It's Kentucky with its biggest lead, a five-point margin, 19-14. Last year, Master, I thought, had trouble because too many people were connecting him with Kyle Macy. They're really the same clone. They look a lot alike. Now he's his old man. Gained about 20 pounds since high school. I don't know where he put it. It still looks like he needs to win. And there is a great physical resemblance. Worthy not able to hit. Brust off the board. Nice fake. Nice play by Brust. Nice garbage basket. Got it all by effort. Work. Hard nose work underneath. Chris Brust, one of several from the New York metropolitan area on this uh, Tar Heel Club out of Babylon, New York. And North Carolina floating the call made by Larry Lumbo. Matt Dougherty, Mike Jordan, return to the North Carolina lineup. Kentucky leading by three, 1916, with nine and a half left in this first half. This is Jimmy Black walking it up. 
Kirkman will not come out. A steal by Mittyfield. He has a three-on-two developing. Nice play by Jordan to slow it down. Dirk Mittyfield. And Jordan leads the attack. This is Black. Worthy. <laughs> And Cartoto looking at uh, Crowley for the goal, oh. and he says, yes, it counts. There was a hesitant then. Coaches and team said, good, good, good. The ref hesitated and said, I got it. It was goaltending. I, li I like the people to see if this is goaltending. Black comes up and kicks it off into Sam Worthy. Now watch Turkman come from the back here. Oh, I don't know if that ball was at its apex at Zenith at that time. It's a hairline call, judgment call. We'll say the Zebras are right. All right. And Worthy gets credit for the field goal. The foul committed by Hurt, his second. Three-point play for James Worthy. No pressure up court now. Dean Smith wants to get a run if he can get a turnover. Kentucky breaks through it. Oh, beautiful fake by Minnie coming down that time. It's like a halfback that broke through the line. Dirk Benefield was fouled by Jimmy Black. We're tied at 19, just under nine left. And here he comes. Here's the fake. Matter of fact, he, he gets Black feet mixed up. He goes down. A beautiful head and shoulders fake. Governed the ball, kept it low, kept his ball alive. You young basketball players out there, don't kill your dribble too soon. Keep it alive. Beautiful play by Black. And a foot race with the kick it off. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Nice Jimmy Black the wall the wall. Jordan was on the right-hand side then. Beautiful play. But, but it didn't count. Traveling violation, but as, here a, we go. as a coach, you don't mind seeing that. Oh, no, here we go. Now, he knows that Jordan's on the right-hand side coming down. He comes up, they call him for traveling. And back to the live action. North Carolina foul called up as Melvin Turpin was crunched going to the hoop. Watch the angle here, here where he breaks out. He knows the guy's back there, beautiful. He did a 180, but he just got his foot down. Good call by the official. He was traveling. This is Melvin Turpin. He was fouled by Mike Jordan, who just picked up his second. Turpin is the sophomore from Lexington, Kentucky, and he has added much strength and weight uh, since coming to Kentucky. He's truly a, a junior, not a, not a southpaw, because he went to a prep school, uh, Fork Union Military Academy in Virginia, to get uh, to bone up on his studies better. So he's really um, in his junior class, but he still has two more years eligibility after this season. And it's Kentucky by two, 21, 19. Here's Jordan. Ah, he needed that. The kid needed that. I like to see a freshman get out of the gate. Now I think you'll see the Jordan that they're all talking about. A lot of people have said that he's the number one freshman ball player in the country. I don't know yet. He was one of the most highly recruited uh, coming from high school. Turpin stopped by Perkins, and it will be North Carolina ball. God, he's like a rubber man, that Sam Perkins. Last year, we used to call him the plastic man. His arms just seem to stretch, stretch, and stretch. We are tied at 21. The Tar Heels in possession. The battle of number one and number two. Back into a zone. A good move by Kentucky. I don't know why they came out. Two, a 2-3 two, zone. Jimmy Black. I can't get a break. But Kentucky's playing it real smart. Now, the next time Jimmy Black shoots, he'll hesitate a little bit longer. They can't seem to unleash Master. But blocked by Perkins. There's the rubber man again. See, they want to block up inside the paint there. Jordan. Yes. What happened? Once Jordan made that shot, Mom, then he's off to the races. Now he got his confidence back. They still got an Achilles here, here, and Black not shooting. Black has to put the ball up. Mike Jordan averaging 15 and a half for ball game, and a reaching foul on North Carolina. Boy, Minnie's giving a lot of head, body fakes, arm fakes. Black picked up, I think that was the second foul, if I'm correct. It is Jimmy Black picking up his second, a timeout called 7-16 remaining. First half, North Carolina by two over Kentucky. Telecast out of the Meadowlands Arena, East Rutherford, New Jersey, and we're delighted to send it to you, North Carolina by two over Kentucky. 
As you look at the shooting of this first half, as we mentioned earlier, Al, the Tar Heels have been having first-half difficulties. Back to the last game against Rutgers last Saturday night at Madison Square Garden in New York, they got off very slowly. Well, what he does, he puts those substitutes in, he gives his baseline a blow, and then they come back out, they usually perk a little better. It looks like they're standing back there in the zone. It'll be the first time this happened. They're in a zone, if that's what it is. It's a 2-1-2. But if you'll notice the North Carolina zone, Sam Perkins, the guy, I know not in the zone. Yes, they are. Sam Perkins, no, they're in man-to-man. -man. Excuse me, that's, that's man-to-man. No, it's zone. Well, I better see, make up my mind here. See how tough uh, it can be to pick out. No, it's a 2-3 zone. Here's Master shooting over. Oh. Now, once Whoa. they went to the zone, that opens up Masters. So you can't have the best of both worlds. Jim Master with his third field goal has six, and he has had difficulty locating his shots. We're tied at 23. Jordan for Perkins. Now you're seeing the famous 1-3-1 one, one Kentucky zone. This is what they're noted for. And that'll be called, let's see. At first, it appeared that Cartado would call up and down, and now in a discussion with Joe B. Hall, I believe he uh, blew his whistle inadvertently. I, I believe so, too. And he said, I'm sorry. Now, if you'll notice, if we get a chance, in the 1-3-1 zone, they put Minifield on the bottom, so he's fast, and he covers corner to the corner. Here's Black. Not able to hit, and Horde off the board. So Kentucky in possession. Minifield, alley up, up. alley up. That's all she wrote. Boy, did those giveaway rims come down that time. The rim gives with 250 pounds of pressure at a 30-degree angle. Looks like he had a ton of pressure that time. Great uh, pass by Minifan. For Melvin Turpin at Kentucky by two. Short for tied. So will not be as powerful now because Jordan got his confidence. Here's the replay. The pass is the key. Now watch Turpin go up. Great pass. Put it right where he wanted. Now watch the rim give. There's that 30 degree angle that it gives. I thought the backboard was going to come down. <laughs> I think these kids like the NBA type ribs. We're tied at 25 with just under six minutes remaining in this first half. These were ribs made to order for a fellow by the name of Daryl Dawkins. What was that? Brown thunder or black thunder? Chocolate or? thunder. Chocolate thunder. Jim Braddock is back for North Carolina. Traveling violation is called. And the Tar Heels take over. Key basket here, whoever gets you're getting down to the shorter end of the game. There's about six minutes left. And Beach Coast would pull up the end. They're going to halftime with a lead. Kentucky staying in the 1-3-1 zone. This is Braddock who just checked back in. Here's Jordan now looking for his shot. And Braddock takes it. Worthy on the tip. Man from Gastonio. 11 points for James Worthy. And the Tar Heels of North Carolina by 2, 27, 25. Horde. And rebounded by Perkins. Here's Jordan. says North Carolina ball. Here's the shot. Watch the shot bounces around, doesn't fall. And watch where you go up for this tap. Wham. Great effort by Worthy. That pass was overthrown. There's the replay again. <laughs> oh, he's a player. It is North Carolina by 4, 29, 25. Kentucky needs a basket fed right here. Kentucky is led by as many as five. North Carolina with a four-point lead, representing their longest lead. And a look at the turnover situation. As many field inbounds. Watch the nice move by Griffin. Oh, he was really mad. <laughs> Eight points for Melvin Turpin. Kentucky down by two. 29-27. Feel on that baseline. He's six foot two and he's covering the baseline from the corner to the corner. There he comes over. The 
a kick killing product, the open shot. He was dope. They're putting the ball up right, they're just not dropping. I look for Masters to pop one up around now. Jordan staying right with Master, who looks for the spot along the baseline. Here he goes, Master. And it is called a goaltend interference, and the basket counts. Watch Masters on this replay. Oh, this is the, oh, this is the real dunk just before this. Watch him go up. Oh, he's mad at somebody. <laughs> Looks like a rubber rim it just pops back up. North Carolina by two, 31-29, just under four minutes left in this first half. Who'd they give credit for that basket to, Masters? Master. Singular. Two-three zone. That time, uh, Doherty tried to get too fine looking for Brust, but last touch by Kentucky. And a timeout has been called by the Tar Heels. 3.34 remaining in this first half. It's North Carolina by two. They lead Kentucky 31 to 29. Their pep band, a large contingent of fans, particularly from the North Carolina area. And they have seen their Tar Heels take a two-point lead on Kentucky, 31 to 29. We resume with North Carolina inbounding. There's a Kentucky fan. That's a little fella had a good time yesterday. Three and a half remaining in this first half. The alley-oop does not work. Turpin picking it off. You can't do an alley-oop against a 6'11 guy. This is Minifield. And Horg with the step. You know, Horde might have walked again that time. He seemed to shuffle his feet. Braddock throwing it away, leading the fast break. Super and play by Masters, Mob, that time. Coming up at halftime, a most unusual treatment of a new record album that has been recorded by Kentucky coach Joe B. Hall. And uh, part of the chorus fell by the name of Al McGuire. Kenny Rogers is very upset. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but we will see. We'll get a peek at the recording session with uh, Al and uh, Joby down in Nashville, Tennessee. This is Hurt. And we're tied at 31. Al, you're becoming a matinee idol now. Oh, no, I can't sing. Matter of fact, they're seeing the, as we, at the halftime of the show, I'm mouthing and I'm out of sync as I mouth. <laughs> 2.45 left first half, and we're tied to 31. North Carolina in possession. This is short. And Doherty. Braddock. I think Braddock will take it next time. There it is. From long range. Tough rebound. Kentucky wants to go. Turpin. And rebounded by Doherty. That was after Master took a long look and changed his mind. There is Jordan. The rim has not been friendly for Jordan. Perkins on the reverse is fouled. Had no choice, had to foul him. Fouled him more with his body than his arm that time. One of the weaknesses on Kentucky, if Melvin Turpin fouls out, then obviously there's no Sam Bowie to back him up. Remarkable, Kentucky can only do it. They lost Chuck Alexander, is now at, at uh, Connecticut. Tillman's at Rutgers. Uh, Dwight Anderson's at Southern California. And they still go on, the beat goes on and on. Yes, the dynasty continues. Of course, Joby Hall had visions of the combination of Bowie and Turpin. I, I, I feel Bowie will be back in a week or so. Speaking to him yesterday, they had to give him one more examination. You ask him if he would like to be redshirted? I don't think so. Hurt. Perkins on the outlet for Braddock. North Carolina by two. Minute 40 remaining in this first half. 
Kentucky just trying to take away the inside game from the Tar Heels and doing a good job of it. Most of the baskets by Sam Perkins and, uh, and Worthy are off the backboard. Dowardy not able to hit. And this is Finneyfield. He has terrific court vision. And Hort stripped by Perkins. Worthy. And uh, let's see what the call is. I... It gets the basket and it counts to the foul. He called him stepping in. Oh boy, let's watch this one. I think the little guy had position. Watch, uh, here's the shot. Missed the shot, Dougherty takes the ball off, he kicks it down. All right, now watch the little fella. I think he had position that time. I thought the basket should have counted and a foul on James for charging. But I didn't have a good angle as the ref had. So Dirk Minifield picks up the foul. That is his second. And James Worthy, the high point man with 15, will go to the line. Chuck Verderber is back. For Kentucky, Chris Bruss, 6'9", senior, has checked back in for North Carolina. Worthy is three out of three from the foul line. The scouting report on Worthy is explosive around the basket, and that last sequence certainly show that a three-point play for James Worthy. And North Carolina leads by five. A 2-2-1 two -two semi-pressure zone up court. Then they settle back into man-to-man. -man. A little bit too late. A little bit too late. They couldn't get over the Masters in time. What quick release he has. Yeah, Peterson, the sub trying to get over to a freshman. Just didn't get there in time. Ten points for Jim Master. Kentucky now down by three. 50 seconds to go in the half. Nice turn by Worthy. One of the quickest guys in basketball has the ball right now. Dickie Beal, yep. sophomore out of Covington, Kentucky, coming on for Minifield. This is Master, and he threw the foul. Uh, poor selection of shot. I'm surprised that's not more set plays for Master to come around a double pick mob and end up getting a shot. North Carolina's played him well. He has had difficulty finding that spot on the floor. As he drives to the basket, he gets a little hesitant here. Watch. A little hesitant. Then it's kind of a, not a maximum effort. You see his muscles weren't strained. He put the ball up on the way down, so it ended up getting a two-shot foul. Buzz Peterson, who just came on, committed the foul. Buzz, the freshman from Asheville, North Carolina. And here is Jim Master with 32 seconds left in the first half. Jim Master, a sophomore out of Fort Wayne, Indiana, a town that... Ah, nice, easy yes. profession this man has. <laughs> Joe B. Hall. Well, I know Fort Wayne brings back all kinds of wonderful memories from your days in the NBA. Oh, that was yesterday, a Lone yes. Ranger, the Green Horn at the Beatles. <laughs> Almost automatic every time he steps to the foul line. And it's North Carolina by three, 38 to 35. I say to go for one shot. There's 25 seconds left for a three-point lead. Making Kentucky come out. Go to their fourth corner type offense. Ah, uh -uh, dangerous, dangerous. Oh, a move by Worthy. Not a good shot. There are now four seconds. Three, two. One, the shot is good if it falls. Halftime. Chuck Bergerber not able to hit. And so at the half in this confrontation of number one and number two, it's North Carolina by three, 38-35. In a moment at halftime, we'll hear from the singing color commentator. Spectacular first half, 18 points for Worthy. What's surprising about Worthy is that they're putting two men on him inside that zone, and every time he touches in the paint, they're around him. He's a true All-American. North Carolina, enough shots from the outside to blow this game out. But now what happens with Kentucky on the other end, they've got to get more garbage baskets. It seems their forwards aren't big enough to counter the strength of North Carolina's baseline. All right, now we made note of the singing color commentator, a fellow by the name of Al McGuire, who actually got himself involved with Kentucky uh, coach Joe B. Hall in recording a record album. Let's take a look and listen. On a warm summer's evening, on the train bound for Nova, I met up with a gambler. We were both too tired to sleep. So we took turns of staring out the window at the darkness. 
till boredom overtook us and he began to speak. He said, Son, I made a life out of reading people's faces and knowing what their cards were by the way they held their eyes. So if you don't mind my saying, I can see you're out of aces. And for a taste of your whiskey, I'll give you some advice. Al, you sound like a romanticist at heart. I can't so sing, I, I had to speak. <laughs> I told him I couldn't and sing when they brought me down there. The then he bummed a cigarette and asked me for a light. The night got deathly quiet and his face lost all expression. He said, if you're gonna play the game, boy, you gotta learn to play it right. You, got you gotta know when to hold them. You gotta know Don't when to fold them. You gotta know Don't when to walk away. You know what's frightening? And know when to run. The chorus took this seriously. You never well, these are all talented money. people. It's done in Nashville in the when great studio. The they had great tickets. The chorus was outstanding. The only problem was I was in Top City. <laughs> when the deal was done. Right now, Kenny Rogers is very upset. Every will know. This is going to go number one the in the charts. Is surviving. <laughs> is knowing Alder, what you to throw away. Alder, yourself for this. And knowing what to keep. Because every I, hand's I, a winner. You know, I was nervous in doing it. It was a lot of fun. And I did it because Joe B. Hall asked me to do it. And the best that you can hope for is to die in your sleep. And when he had finished speaking, he turned back toward the window, crushed out his cigarette, off to sleep. Joe B. has a very unique Somebody style. I, I don't think he handles himself the same way on the bench. He broke the oh, yeah, he's like a preacher here. On the bench, he's more like a Neanderthal man. An ace that I could keep. You got to know when to hold. You got to know when to fold. You got to know when to walk away. And know when to run. You never count your money when you're sitting at the table. There'll be time enough for counting. Al, I would imagine these next few weeks will be very tough for you with all the record offers coming in. Well, I don't, I don't have anything to do with it. Anybody wants a record, just write Joe B. Hall at Kentucky. <laughs> no, I'm talking about, from a personal point of view, I can see all the contracts coming in uh, looking for additional records and albums to be cut by Al McGuire. Oh, yeah, at least uh, one for every 20,000 that are out there. Out of sight, Joe. Let's have a, let's have a give me a high five. <laughs> you think Kenny Rogers is in trouble? No, I don't think so, Al. Uh, you're lucky you got basketball to go back to. I hope so. They may not let me back in the state. Well, thank you for inviting me to Nashville. Glad to have you. Thanks thank so. all you guys, too. Super. Al, how did this all uh, come about? Uh, Joe B. called me. We had Happy Chandler did two record, two songs, and I only did one, The Gambler, and Kay Wood Ledford, the famous radio announcer uh, for the for the uh, Wildcats, also did one. And I went down. I enjoy it. I personally, in my life, enjoy anything the first time. But after that, then it gets kind of boring. Are you saying there won't be a second time for this? I went to see the record was already done before that, and we went down and just mouthed over. That's why I was out of sync. <laughs> I noticed. But, Al, I think you're selling yourself short. You say there's no second time. I'm not talking about it. You don't need a chorus. You don't need any support. Uh, I'm talking about a single. Leave me alone, will you? <laughs> <laughs> we are back to basketball. We're at halftime at the Meadowlands with the score. North Carolina over Kentucky, 38 to 35. At the statistics with North Carolina leading by three, but uh, statistically it is close. It's all a push. You got to think in the back of your mind now what would happen if Sam Bowie was here. Now they're all even all the way down. So you get down to the rebounding. And Carolina's out rebounding them by four, by four boards, which is very very important. That's the only difference. I've I've never been in the half where it's been so equal. And both great great ball clubs. They can go back to their ninth tenth man without breaking out in a heat rash. I like that. Good. <laughs> as, as we look at the uh, Kentucky rundown, Jim Master, who earlier had difficulty uh, finding a good shot location, came on strong. He's high man for the Wildcats with uh, 12 points. Watch your Masters. Watch his follow through after he shoots. Very important. Excellent. It's like watching the clinic. And worthy, obviously, 18 boards. All just
just about muscled underneath. Not too much finesse because they got a zone packed around him. He's averaging 16 and a half per game, so he has surpassed that in this uh, first half. James Worthy, the high man, with 18 points in all as we get set for the second half between North Carolina and Kentucky. Bob, you know, they named this place after Governor Byrne, right? Yes. I, I, I like something like that. I know it's been a lot of problems. He's just getting out of office this year and next year. But my dad always said, don't send me flowers when I die. Buy me a drink when I'm alive. <laughs> so this guy named the building after himself while yes. he's in office. <laughs> my type of guy. <laughs> well, there is a movement. <laughs> to strip the name <laughs> burn not why he's in office <laughs> uh, that is that is true but it is being low-key at this point <laughs> that's okay you should uh, you know name bills after people while they're alive <laughs> same way with people a lot of money they should get the money away while they're alive oh it was start the second half yes. national anthem bang right we have not been hit with the alternate possession as of yet and we have not heard from you on that subject. i'm not going to talk about it okay. people getting upset they say i talk too much about it Kentucky started in the zone. North Carolina in the white. Kentucky in the dark uniform, the blue. This is Jimmy Black, the quarterback of the club. He's playing with two personal fouls. Matt Doherty, Sam Perkins down low. Can't find him. This is Mike Jordan. Still the overconscious of kicking it inside. Matt will take that one. Open shot missed by Doherty. Nice follow. The freshman, Mike Jordan with eight points. What poise for a young guy. 40 to 35, it's North Carolina by five as we open up in the second half. This is Ford looking for Hurt. Many field and master at the guards. The big guy is Turpin. Ford with the off-balance shot, rebounded by Perkin. Forced that shot a little bit too much. Biggest spread of the game again, Moth. You mind these cross-court passes, North Carolina. Some coaches believe in it against zones. I, I never liked it. And Dougherty again. Rebounded by Horde. And Minifield with master breaking down. Nice move by Dougherty getting up on master. Last touch by Perkins. Dean Smith has gone away from the blue team effect. The starting five of North Carolina could be uh, the toughest in the nation in terms of uh, player by player, but uh, Dean doesn't have the bench strength that he had past years. Well, I, I think he dropped the blue team last year, and it's a little bit too dangerous in a key game like this to make a substitution of five men all at once. That's kind of a problem we've just seen there. Uh, Jimmy Black picked up his third foul. He's the guy that governs the rhythm of the game, and Dean Smith with a lead tries to break your rhythm by alternating defenses on you. Um. Kentucky in possession and trailing by five. Bennett and a half gone by. Second half, he stepped out. See what, what North Carolina is doing to him. It's like a run jump, the double teaming out there, doubling up on the man with the ball. And the other three men are cutting to the outlet lanes, the passing outlet lanes. So Charles Hurt stepped out of bounds, and North Carolina takes over. This is Jordan in the backcourt with Black. They're giving Dougherty the shot. I still say uh, they got to shoot from the top of the key, right where Jordan is. Now nah, he should have put it up some. Worthy on the tip. Pogo oh. stick back up the second time. Kentucky needs to get going. They need a sweat, or they're going to have to call an early timeout and get themselves straight. I'd get the ball to the Masters. North Carolina by seven. An offensive foul on Jim Master. Use the elbow. That is his first. Watch James Roy. They go up the second time. Jordan kicks the ball into him. He misses the first one. Didn't get his head around fast enough. And there's the second time up. Bang, bang. There's the timeout. I said that would happen. Good call by Joe B. Hall. He did not wait for the commercial timeout. Only a pro coach does that. Two and a half minutes gone by. Second half. And Kentucky down by right here on NBC. And Sports World will be seen 3.30 in Los Angeles. Now getting back to what you talked about before the break. 
Uh, you lauded Joby Hall for taking that timeout. Yeah, he didn't wait for the commercial timeout. 17 and a half minutes left to go now for the half, second half. Commercial timeout comes in at 16. Oh, that's a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar skyhook. Sam Perkins, not one out of the North Carolina playbook, but he'll take it. I thought one of the mistakes made by North Carolina in the final game against Indiana in the second half, the team waited too long for the commercial timeout at the top of the second half. Big, big basket just then. Got Kentucky off the blocks. They're down, they're down seven. Wildcats answering back a 44-37 lead for North Carolina. Here's Jimmy Blind. Yes. Big one, Jim. Big one. 46-37. Tar Heels with their longest lead. Three and a half gone by second half. Nice roll by Turpin. Moved his feet. Took a shuffle. Melvin Turpin called for steps. Kentucky got to get the heads up. I feel they kind of depressed a little bit. North Carolina comes in at 5-0, and all, ranked number one of the nation. Victories over Kansas, USC, Tulsa, South Florida, and Rutgers. Perkins again. Nice play by Minifield. Dean Smith spreading them out now. Get it over to Masters. Here's Minifield. And rebounded by Jordan. Okay. Now watch Carolina. He has a nine-point lead. He'll spread them out. Start eating the clock a little bit. Do what he wants. Get it in the paint to his men. Oh, 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 oh. Perkins. Oh, Sam, baby. And the foul. Sam, you made the pants too long. What do you see? Watch the length of his arms on this replay. Now watch Sam go up there. Watch the arms. Now the foul committed by Derek Hoare, that's his second. Here he comes, another angle. He stays up there, spreads those wings out. Now you got a new game here. You got the Tar Heels going probably to a 12-point lead if he cans this one. Oh, no, he did an 11-point lead. I wouldn't be surprised they settled back into the zone now. Hennefield off the spin. And the foul. He charged, but he got the ball out of his hand in time, but the basket's good. Great play by Matt Doherty. The basket counts, Benefield receiving. Here we go, he gets the ball off, he charges obviously to Matt Doherty, he plays it off the window. And Benefield, Aldo's picked up his third personal foul. Well, both teams the same, Jimmy Black has three. They're both the point guards, they're both the jockeys. There's a number of wins, one, two in the nation, and basketball wins. Fabled history in college basketball for both these schools. The all-time series, North Carolina has won 12 of 18, a series that dates back to 1924. Perkins with great position. Coach Dean Smith got him where he wants him. He got Worthy and Perkins in the paint now. They got to play a man-to-man -man because of the score. This is Hort. His foul. Got a break that time. Hurt got the ball on the inside. They're not careful. They could get blown out right now. I feel they got to get the ball in the Masters' hands. Mike Jordan collects his third. And Charles Hurt, the junior from Shelbyville, Kentucky. On the foul out of shooter couple. Looks like he needs some weight lifting to develop his upper body, doesn't he? Has the lifeguard <laughs> physique, uh, the similar look to uh, Al McGuire in his days at St. John's. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this guy kicks sand in my face. <laughs> Boy, is he built. And Dougherty on it for North Carolina. Ten-point lead for the Tar Heels. Now watch him try to kick it inside. Uh, Kentucky's in the zone, but he'll take him out of it, I believe. I think Dean will back it up against that zone. Let's see. Good hands by Minifield, but Jordan recaptures. Kind of surprised me. They should be very patient against that zone. Hold the ball. Make him come out of it. The freshman doesn't know, which is good. <laughs> Mike Jordan, five field goals, 10 points, and it's North Carolina by 12, 52 to 40. It's their biggest lead. There's Hurt, deflected by Perkins, and Worthy gets it.
knocks it down for Perkins oh. to not see it. Mini really got down caught that time. Perkins wasn't aware of the pass. He kind of skied the pass too much. Mini field and a shake and bake move. Perkins off the ball. The lead for Dougherty. Saved it, but knocked it out of bounds. Dean doesn't like the way it's going right now. I feel with this amount of a lead, they should pull the ball up a little bit. Got a 12-point lead, 14 minutes to go. Great ball game. Dirk Minifield, match with Jimmy Black. Bad shot at a crowd taken by Derek Horde. Got to go to Masters. He has to hold the ball out here. Dean Smith, but they're probably going to attack again. He's attacking a 2 3 zone. See, they, they got him where they go man to man. James and the Sam go underneath in the paint, and that's all she wrote. So then the zone, but it's too late now with a 12 point lead. Kentucky, I mean, North Carolina will start wearing down the clock. They kill the clock. Kentucky's gonna have to come out of the zone. They got no choice. Because the clock is equally their opponent. Uh-oh, bad shot, son. And rejected, and Jordan got a pop in the right eye. Just a moment ago, Al, as uh, you commented on that last shot taken by Jordan, which he hit. Dean Smith called Jordan over to have a couple of words with him, and he could not be pleased with that last one, although they got a break. Master committing the foul. He got hung in the air there. Master put his hand in before he went up for the shot. It's a two-shot foul. But still, the shot shouldn't have been taken. You got the Wildcats just where you want them if you're a Tar Heel fan. All right, now he's moving in some more speed. He moved Minifield out, uh, Joe B, and moved in Beal, who's uh, quick on quick. Sophomore. He's, on, he's on my old blur team. Is he? Yep. Sophomore Dickie Beal coming on for Dirk Minifield. <laughs> Who is the captain of the all blur team? Um, could have been Dwight Anderson. Yeah. I, I kind of forget who, who was on the club exactly, but. Uh... It's a 13 point lead for North Carolina, and Jordan now has 11. Master bit out of his range, even for Jim Master. I got to come around that pick, Master, right now. And Jordan right up on him. Heights, who just checked in, was pushed by Perkins. I was redshirted last year. Class-wise, the junior, eligibility-wise, he is the sophomore. When we say redshirt in the NCAA, you're allowed five years to complete your four years of eligibility. And last touch by the Tar Heels. North Carolina has three team fouls. Kentucky now with four. Derek Ford able to get out of the crowd. This is Dickie Beal. In a 2-3 zone, watch Master to shoot now. Got to move the ball a little quicker, Kentucky. That's it. Master can't find it. Nice pass for Heights. Beautiful. Beautiful pass. Nice play. Heights got good position down low. 53-42, North Carolina by 11. I still can't understand why they're playing against Kentucky zone. Because they can eat him up in a man-to-man -man situation. And again, Jordan fires. Well, uh, it's probably the best thing in the world that Jordan you can't hear what I'm saying. <laughs> Mike Jordan with 13 points. And a 13-point North Carolina lead, 11.45 left in the game. Master around Black, using glass, and a fast break for North Carolina. Kentucky getting back, Black moving on field. Here's Jordan, and they'll slow it down. And you know Jordan had a notion, although surrounded at the baseline. Maybe that's what makes him so good. He plays free. He doesn't know enough to tighten up as a freshman. Jimmy Black. Yes. They're going now. They're relaxed. Kentucky's tightened up a little bit. There's a lot of time left. That's the only advantage Kentucky has right now is the amount of time left. 
Here's Ford. Oh. Answering back, 57 to 44. North Carolina by 13. Wildcats looking to prevent a blowout. Well, Kentucky has to go hard man to man to try to create some turnovers. Again, there's a lot of time left. Here's Worthy. Hurt for Beal, makes the move on Black. Oh, come on! And a blocking foul, Jimmy Black. That's bad, that's his fourth, Mob. That's not good for the Tar Heels. And he'll be replaced. Jim Braddock, who played well, although briefly in the first half, has come on for Jimmy Black. Dean Smith. Here comes the move. A lot of faking. Close call, but he did step in. Very difficult calls, he's charging the blocking calls. Almost impossible to, to hit him on the head each time. Dean Smith making another substitution. Buzz Peterson, six foot three freshman from Asheville, North Carolina, who also played briefly in the first half, has come on. Now, I, I like to talk ahead, and I'm usually wrong, but they will not attack the zone anymore, in my opinion. Let's see what happens the next time down. Well, we have 10 and a half. Remaining of the game, Beal way off after hitting the first. And a 12-point North Carolina lead. This is Brennan. Uh, Perkins and Worthy are just too strong inside. All right, Kentucky went to man-to-man. -to -man. This is what Dean Smith wanted. Peterson had just checked in, watched by Master. James has nice position there, but he'll kick it back out. Perkins. Sam Perkins hitting from all angles. He now has 12 and a 14-point North Carolina lead. Well. Oh. Ford. Breaking the Wildcats with him. 12, 59, 47. When Worthy is Perkins, they are number one in college basketball. And the call away from the ball by the official Ed Cartano, working the game with Larry Lembo and Mickey Crowley, all three officials from the ECAC, holding foul. It's a one-year contract between North Carolina and Kentucky. Elvin Griffin committing the foul, his second. And we'll be back right after these words.
because every time he's within three feet of the basket, which where games are usually won, he comes a double team. Spread him out, 11 point lead. This is short for Dougherty. It's gonna go to Sam or James. Uh oh, they're all right one again. No harm, no foul, and Doherty for Worthy. Rebound, Doherty. Oh, tough kick from Long Island. From East Meadow, Long Island. Or East Meadow, New York, correction. Carolina's in the zone. Here's Horn. Kentucky has to be a little bit more patient, and they got to go to Masters. Derek Horn has been forcing his shots, looking to get him up. And it has cost. Jordan off the turn gives it back to Perkins. Alley up. Fade away by Perkins. And Kentucky on a break. North Carolina got back. Here's Peel. What a move. Oh, what a move. He looked like he was going to the left end. Ended up going straight in. So Dickie Peel of the Al McGuire all blur team just provided the blur basket. Watch Dickie go here. It looks like he's going to the left. Uh, yeah. It looks like he's going to the left. He changes direction in midair. Ends up going to the right. Now you got to... Now watch this angle. You got to remember that Jimmy Black is playing with four fouls, so he's hesitant. Here it goes. Now watch Jimmy Black back up a little bit. Dickie Beal in the face of Jimmy Black. Six and a half left in the ball game. We'll be right back. The slit of the Buffalo Bills has been calling the Jets a dirty football team. Says the Jet players have been spitting at him. That time, Dougherty was bumped down the play. Substitution, Bo Lanter, 6'1", senior walk-on has come on for Kentucky, along with Chuck Verdeber. Foul committed by Verdeber. They got to come out now, obviously play close. You're down to really the, the key time of the game. Six and a half minutes left, 11-point spread. And the Wildcats are over the uh, team foul limit. Here's Matt Doherty. 15 for 18 from the uh, foul line on the season. One and one for Matt. Sophomore from East Meadow. Not able to take advantage. This is Beal. Again puts the move on. And the foul call. That's an all blur. <laughs> no question about it. Dickie Beal will go to the line for a couple. And as he's going down the court, I want you all to watch how he's given little head fakes, arm and leg fakes. Watch his head move every now and then. Now he slides through the crack between Doherty and uh, Jordan. Ball should have went in, kept his head up, just didn't drop. Mike Jordan committing the foul is fourth, so four apiece on Jordan. And Black, and poor foul shooting at both ends now. Dickie Beal is one for three from the line. Going to put pressure up court, Kentucky now. Watch him. They'll be overplaying man to man. North Carolina by 10, and time running down. 6.20 remaining in the game. Turpin has to come up on Sam. They're letting an outlet. You can't do that, Turpin. you got to go up on him. The clock's your opponent now, not North Carolina. They'll kick it inside to James when they get the chance. Jordan had it battled away by a lantern, and last touch by Jordan, so a break for Kentucky. Yeah, uh, Jordan obviously made a lot of baskets, but I, I don't know if he understands how to play against the clock. He usually takes a junior or senior to know. Carolina's sitting in the 2-3 zone. Here comes Masters back in because of the zone. Hurt off the turn, and he threw the foul. He was hit by Black, and that is number five on Jimmy Black. Bad, bad foul, Jimmy. You should have let him take it. He didn't have his balance. And I thought Charles Hurst should have kicked that ball over to Beal. Beal was about 17 feet out. Jimmy Black, the senior out of Cardinal Hayes High School in the Bronx, has fouled out. 
Don't forget, gang, now any jump ball goes to Kentucky. The arrow is pointing that way. All right. <laughs> Which is um, an advantage, a big advantage. Now referring to the alternate possession rule. At the end of the game, if North Carolina, the arrow's pointing towards them, they'll take an intentional five count and then take the ball out. And now this, the site where alternate possession cost UCLA as Rutgers came up with the upset win over the bronze of UCLA several weeks back. And it was an alternate possession that hurt UCLA that actually won the ball game for Rutgers. All right, they broke the double digit again. Down to eight. Turnover now will be big for the Wildcats. And lots of time, five and a half remaining in the game. This is the time of the game that you do want Jimmy Black in. Nice move by Braddock out there. He's the senior. He's one of the only, I think he might be the only senior out there. Oh, there goes that Boy, freshman again. He had a notion. <laughs> They're going high now. They're setting up two, three high. They'll look to go four corners, go back door. This isn't only a delay, this is an offense, too. They'll probably end up getting a trippy by going back door. Perkman has to stay up on Sam Perkins. And we're down to five minutes left of the game. North Carolina in possession. Oh, tough play. Here's Perkins, and he's grabbed by Verdurber. Chuck Verdurber had to go at him. He had no choice. Otherwise, it would have been a three-point play or an obvious two-point play. He did it manly. He went up with his body. The only thing you don't do in basketball is go low on the man. All right, here they are in a semi-delay freeze. Okay, now the ball goes in. It goes over here. Watch a pass. Now, here goes Sam. Here goes Chuck right into him. We can see the same thing from overhead, just a different angle. Now, watch Chuck Baderba go right into Sam after this pass. Obvious foul. That would be, if it wasn't a one-on-one, -one, that would be an intentional two-shot foul. And a timeout is called. 4.54 left in the game. The score, North Carolina 63 and Kentucky 55. And still say second. If Kentucky loses, they can stay in second. But I, I would think that Wichita State, who is the sleeper that we have on later in the season against LSU, will go up to second. Virginia has the best ball player in college basketball today. And Samson, the second best ball player in college basketball today, is sitting on the bench about 75 feet from us. A fellow by the name of Sam Bowie, who has not played a game thus far this 81-82 uh, season because of the leg injury. Pretty tough to make this foul shot. It's a long time out. There's Sam. Sam. This is Perkins. Drilled it. He is now three for four from the foul line. And a good foul shooter at 75% on the year. We Came will see. Brooklyn. Originally, right, Latham, New York. Spent a couple of years uh, in Brooklyn. Another New York City product playing for the Tar Heels. North Carolina has four timeouts remaining, and Kentucky has three. We have 4.45 left in the game, and Kentucky in possession, trailing by 10. Nice play by Bowden. A force by Master. Oh, what a play, the tip-in by Vergerber. I'm not sure, I thought that might have been Turpin, I'm not sure. It is, it's Turpin, receiving credit. He has 10. That, that was a nice, a nice oh. basket to keep him in the ball game. <laughs> North Carolina now by eight. You see the clock running down. Turpin, you gotta go out. You gotta go out there, pal. What are you gonna do? Sit back and camp? Okay, gotta create play. They're losing Kentucky. Now they're trying to keep a guy back in the paint. Kentucky, you can't do it. Worthy with the stuff of the bucket. No fear, man. No fear. James Worthy. Nice go. legitimate shot. He took the shot just before, but he, he lost it. And Master with 14, but that's his first field goal the second I'm half. I'm his first legitimate shot this year. James Worthy now has 24. He's two away from his career high. There's the back door. Perkins. 
And again, North Carolina by 10, 69, 59, 310. That's good again. Bad pass. Many field with a lazy pass and a fall. Yeah, that kind of flat game. But he'll have great games before the year's over. But you get the picture now is they're bringing out Kentucky. They gotta come out and play hard man to man. Here's the back door again. Oh, beautiful. Oh, come on, baby. Another defeat of the hands of North Carolina, Minifield. Not, not over yet, Bob. You know, I don't like to put a caution like that, but it's not over yet. A couple of turnovers, and you can get lucky. I doubt whether they can do it, but it's possible. Joe B has had his difficulties against North Carolina. He's lost four of five. He's down by 10 with 2.15 remaining. There's the back door again. What they do is they bring their defensive men high. The baseline men, the forwards and guards, that are so used, forwards and centers. They're so used to having the baseline as part of their defense. When you bring them up court, they can't guard both ways. Now the announcement, just under two left. Another beautiful back door, yes, and it comes. Just what I told you, Sam Perkins caught him high. Uh, Turkman doesn't know how to play high without a baseline in back of him. Went back door, automatic chipping. Here's the play, if you're watching from the far side, Worthy catches him. Turkman turned his head about a second before the, the camera caught it. So all you gotta do is go to the baseline, that's all she wrote. Inside position. And that was foul number three, committed by Melvin Turpin. Sam Perkins looking for his 19th point. We will see North Carolina again here on NBC on Saturday, January 9th, 1 o'clock Eastern time. And a big one against the Cavaliers of Virginia at Chapel Hill. It is possible there could be 1-2 at that time of the year. In both polls. Now the Kentucky fans got to keep their head up. Hey, you've got Sam Bowie sitting over there. Maybe the second best ball player in college basketball today. Seven foot two, seven foot three. Charles Hurt with 16 and a timeout is called by Kentucky. So they have two timeouts remaining. We have a minute and 42 left in the game. And it's North Carolina by 11, 74 to 63. Sports. And Mickey Crowley with the call. Quick call to stop the clock. One on one. And if they keep that up, eventually they'll call an intentional foul, too. See this huddle on the foul line? Dean Smith put that in the basketball, a lot, along with a lot of other things. He put in the four corners, he put in the jump switch, he put in some point zones. He's been an innovative in basketball. Obviously, he was the guy that brought back the goal in 1976 from Montreal. He's the president of the uh, National Coaches Basketball Association. He is basketball. Dean Smith in his 21st year. And he's won eight ACC tournament titles. He's gone to the NCAA semifinals six times the last 15 years, still looking to win that first one. Uh, it's kind of monkey on his back, and people keep jabbing him about that. Benny Phil. Pressure up court. Watch the quick foul again. North Carolina by 11. Here Same. comes our freshman. No, he pulled up that time. Oh, look out, Master and Doherty came together. And last touch by Master of Kentucky. Marv Albert sitting in for Dick Enberg along with Al McGuire. And we'd like to extend our congratulations to the Emmy Award winning uh, Mr. Enberg, who is best in the business, in my opinion. Does one of the great jobs, not only college basketball, but uh, NFL football. Dick wisely rested this weekend. <laughs> Getting ready for the Rose Bowl. Clock ticking away. And as you see, we are under a minute. Tar Heels in possession and leading by 11. And Jordan is hit on the reach in. Jo Jordan still wants more. And again, the North Carolina huddle. The 
quickie huddle at the foul line. Watch this kid's follow through on the foul line. If we can catch it. This is the freshman Michael Jordan. He's out of North Carolina. Has an excellent, excellent follow through. There's Dirk Minifield. Five fouls. Had a bad game, but he'll be back. He's a, he's a potential All-American. But watch the follow through on this foul shot here. Every young person, guy and girl out there that plays basketball should copy this. And you're talking about Mike Jordan, the freshman from Wilmington, North Carolina. Minifield fouled out with eight points. See the hand extended? Oh, See the fingers there, nice and relaxed. And at the end, the wrist fish hooks. Bends down a little bit. That there is a clinic in foul shooting. Now watch me give him the kiss of death. He'll probably <laughs> miss this one. See the, see the hands? Nice. Dynamite. And a 13-point lead for number one right, North Carolina. Field, nice pass. Oh, that was out of frustration. Charlie Hurt put that in there. Hey, you know, one of the things I like about North Carolina, in their yearbook, Dean Smith lists all the guys that have graduated and what they're doing. He's had 121 athletes in 20, in 20 years there. 115 have gotten their degrees. 53 went on for graduate work, and 42 have played in pro basketball. I got the foul on Kentucky. And we'll get another look at Charles Hurt putting it down. Yeah, I think it's more of a frustration dunk here. They know the game's over. He kind of gets fair to himself and the rim. James Worthy will go to the foul line as you take another look at Hurt putting it away. And James Worthy is four for four from the line, looking to match his career high. One and one, that's 25 points for Worthy. Carolina beat them on the baseline. No doubt, I thought last year that Carolina had the best baseline in college basketball. I feel that Doherty has moved in there and with their two substitutes uh, coming in, Brust and um, uh, Barlow. Is it? Braddock. So, and those two guys coming in, they, they probably have the best baseline again in basketball. You're surprised about the convincing victory by North Carolina? Uh, no, it wouldn't be this way, I believe, if Sam Bowie was eligible to play. I mean, you're talking about a first-team All-American that's sitting on the bench. And a quickie timeout following the hoop by Derek Horde. 80-69, to North Carolina by 11 with 29 seconds. Remaining in the game, Sam Bowie, incidentally, is out with a stress fracture of the uh, left shin ball, first discovered last August, and they're going to take an open look at it next week and make a determination to see if uh, the can return. We'll be right back. Ordinary, because they're so well coached, they can handle anything that's from a book. You'll probably see one foul before we tap out of here. <laughs> Now the clock running down. There's time left in the game. North Carolina in possession with the <laughs> big lead. And again for Jordan. 82-69, 10 seconds left. Masters should let a bomb go here. There it goes. Cloud counting it down. Two seconds remaining. And North Carolina will inbound. So that will do it as Doherty runs off the clock. And number one, North Carolina, will remain as number one in the nation. They have defeated the Wildcats of Kentucky. The final score, North Carolina, 82, and Kentucky, 69.